Hi, welcome back to Crate Myrtle Journals. This is a continuation of my series of a crate myrtle blossom four different ways. Today's way is watercolor. <clears throat> and this was supposed to be a series of four, but I discovered something about myself and that is that I paint so slowly or I draw so slowly that I couldn't make a series of four videos because each video would be too long. And I'm not skilled enough yet to um, do something and speed it up. And I really, I enjoy hearing people talk through their, through their crafts. And when, if, if I don't want to hear someone talk through their crafts, I just put it on double fast play. Um, I know everyone does things individually, but I prefer to chat and just try to make a 15 minute to 30 minute video. So this is first way. I mean, this is the fourth way, watercolor. So instead of having a series of four, I did them already and I'll just show them to you. So my channel name is Crate Myrtle Journal and I have Crate Myrtle blooming outside my window here in Arkansas. It's July, so they're in full bloom. And I decided to um, draw one with pen, draw one with pencil, use colored pencils and use watercolor. So I don't, I'm, I've just learned a watercolor in the last few years and I like playing with I learn a lot of techniques online from teachers, you know, teachers that we follow. Uh, so this one is Como Rebe or Como Rebe um, watercolors. That is the fourth way. And here's my example. For the colored pencil, I used uh, barrel color pris Prismacolor pencils. And this was the colored pencil one. Before I start, I make a patch of potential colors that I might use to see which ones match the actual flower. And this one I felt like was pretty close. You can see it's getting kind of um, old on the edge of the flower, like the blossom is fading. This was, I did three in pen because I really was not satisfied with any of the ones I did in pen. And the one that I so, sort of liked in pen was with a sepia micro, micro or micron um, Sakura pin and I turned it into a accent or focal point on this journaling card this tag so I sort of liked that pin one this one not so much and here was the first one I did was my rough no this was the this might have been my third one and this was the pencil one and I used color a drawing HB pencil for that and um, after I did that, I was satisfied with that and I might color copy that a few times. I mean, I might copy it and use it elsewhere. But the pen ones, not so happy. But I did think pen drawings look great if you combine pen drawings and watercolor. So I think I'm gonna go back through here and add watercolor to these. Um, and this was the, the I made this decision uh, that this was the closest one. Cerise, how do you spell that? Cerise was this color. And I thought, yes, that is closest to it. So I think I'll dot that around on the blossom part. And already, I like it more. <laughs> yes, that's all it took. But I, I am learning to draw quickly with pen instead of overanalyzing and overworking something. And that's a challenge. I've gone into my backyard and just drawn flowers and stems and leaves, trying to draw the outline in pen without overanalyzing it. From high school on, I think I tried to draw things that were going to be a masterpiece the moment I put the pen or pencil to paper. And instead of giving myself the freedom to just play and experiment and not worry about the outcome. So now I start to see my sketchbooks as not a book of masterpieces that are going to be ever shared or printed or used anywhere. But instead I have the freedom to just try things even if they don't turn out very well. Like a lab book. I think that called uh, my sketchbook was like a lab where you can experiment. 
think I'll go outside of the edge just a little bit more here. I'm going to add a little bit lighter color by just removing some of that. And now I'm going to add a little green. And I chose, what was this green? Peak green. I'm going to add a little watercolor. I mean a little water to that. My paint palette is just a vintage saucer. That might be too dark. This is peak green. Okay, peak green. I'll add a little bit darker certain spots I'm going to add a little more pink to these um, seed pods. I don't know what this is called on the cream myrtle, but it's, it's kind of like the bud that becomes the flower. I'm going to add a little more pink to that. Yep, I already like it so much better now that it has some color on it. Go add just a little bit more pink here and there to imitate the darker tones in that. The combination of doodle and paint I really like because even if you um, are not so skilled at it and it's loose looking, somehow with watercolor and the doodle lines it looks kind of like professional or like something you might see from a um, professional artist. It's like the, the combination of the um, doodle lines and watercolor. I'm going to take up a little bit of that, a little less, not so bright there, maybe not so bright there, or here. It's one nice thing about watercolors, you can pick it back up. This isn't even watercolor paper. Oops. Okay, I like that. Okay, so to review, I'll show you all four again. This is a crepe myrtle, four ways. Pencil. Pen, and now I've added watercolor to it. Pen by itself. Colored pencil. another pen that I was playing with. I was trying, it's like the fourth or fifth attempt to try to draw it a pen. Actually, I don't mind that one. That one isn't so bad. I used an online example as a reference as well, and that helped me. 
and watercolor. I think I'm going to add color to this one too, but I better put a plastic page between this and my last one or it's going to get messed up. Here we go. Oh, I've got that one too, but this is the one I want to add some color to. And in the same way that you would use illustrations in a book in your artwork, you can simply use these illustrations instead. So you have something that's truly unique and no one else has ephemera just like yours because it's your own um, drawings. It's very satisfying. Art for me, junk journaling, watercoloring, drawing, cutting and pasting. It's really therapy. It helps me relax. I definitely use the products that I make um, as gifts and I, I sell them locally. So I make them um, and they do, I do use them. I use them. But just by themselves, just producing them is so relaxing for me. I know a lot of people see art as their therapy. Let me get a little bit more of that peak green. And a little bit of that pink in those little rose, not rose buds, but. dotting on that color. Another thing about watercolor is it lasts forever because you seem to use so little of it at a time. But then again, I don't watercolor often enough, I guess, to, to use it up. I'm going to add a little more green and then I think this one will be done as well. I have a giveaway of scraps to celebrate having over 700 subscribers. I'm having a giveaway of just scraps from my scrap pile, little bits, and some homemade ephemera I've made. And um, I'm trying to remember what day I, I started that. Let me see, I have a little note about it here. I did it on July 4th, and I said it would be four weeks from July 4th. So if you go to my channel, you'll see where I listed in the title that it's a giveaway. And if you put a comment in that video, you're eligible for the giveaway for the United States, continental US. Um, and I'll send you, if you are the random person chosen on July 18th, I will send you that scrap pack. Other people have given away scrap packs that I've tried to get before. I've tried to win giveaways of scrap packs because when I see their scraps, I think, oh my goodness, their scraps are different from mine and just inspiring or, you know, just ideas. But also I have an envelope in my uh, giveaway that is um, ephemera that I've made. And seeing how other people make ephemera, just their examples of tags and such. I don't know, it's just it's thrilling to get something else from someone else and get ideas from it. I've never bought anyone else's junk journal, 
but of course I love watching examples online of other people's ideas and that's where I get the wealth of my ideas. I don't have very many original ideas. Well, my husband, he, he says that's not true. He says that I have a lot of original ideas or I give something my own um, personality or my own spin on it. Okay, that is the pin with a little bit more uh, detail on it, which I've got some water here. And here's the scrap pack that I'm giving away. I'm going to move this so I don't disturb it. Let it dry. I'm giving away this scrap pack. It has some tape that's decorative. Of course, little bits of wallpaper, lace, paper ruffles I've made. Paper ruffles. An envelope of things I've made, tags I've made. Just a little bit of everything. Paper ruffles, lace, some beautiful scrapbook paper, some washi tape, Oh, a couple of uh, cutouts, those are wreaths, it's a little stack of post-it notes, some fabric ribbon, some paper ruffles, just a little bit of scraps uh, from around my desk, which I think um, will be fun for the recipient to play with. Let's see what else, I think I had something else to show and tell. Oh yes, it was the next journal I'm working on. I'm still in the middle of my uh, Faith Builder series. But I had to pause right now and show you my, I had to pause and make this journal because I have a grandson that's about to be born. And this was an old Funk and Wild Wag, Funk and Wagnalls encyclopedia, but it has the most beautiful um, Italian marble on the inside and the end papers were too. So this is going to be the journal. I'll put in a spine. This will be a bookmark in it. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is going to be painted, but this is the base before it's painted. Just did the um, medium with the stencil to get that impression and then I'll paint it. Um, although I like the light color against the, um, the vintage brown brownish green. So that's the next journal I'm working on for my grandson who's going to be born next month. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching.